welcome everybody, welcome back to another Sunday morning show. Good morning Lester. Good morning Dan. How are we? Very good. Thank How you. has your week been? It was good, didn't, didn't see you at all. Well I did, I did actually, saw you a bit sooner than we'd hoped. Yeah, but, no uh, trophy. No I thought you were going to bring it back and show me the Sunningdale Foursomes trophy. Shame isn't it. No. So this week I've been away with uh, Alex Evans, we've been off playing in the Sunningdale Foursomes trophy, which I have to say is just a delight. Like it's such a good event. You met such a few stars event. as well didn't you? Yeah, I was on the putting green and Sandy Lyle came over and asked for a selfie with me. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Sandy are like this now. <laughs> yeah. And um, and even like, it was fantastic because you've got Solheim Cup players. Yeah. So we, we had Laura Davies playing, Trish Johnson was playing in it. Um, it was just it was just fantastic. Obviously, like, Sandy Lyle was playing in it as well, and there's, there was a number of European tour players uh, playing in the event as well, which is which is great to see them hitting golf balls to start with. You, you went wander yeah. down the, on the on the um, driving range, and there they are, just yeah, hitting well. balls. Absolutely fantastic. It'd nice to have played one of them, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, you say that, but then that would have been an earlier exit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd have helped me in the shot, though. <laughs> you probably would have. Yeah. <laughs> so you've had a busy week with um, bits oh, coming in, haven't you? Yeah. All the pre book that we did. Late last year, early this year, has all just all, all arrived. All arrived on Leicester for this week. So on my own, so yeah. yeah. Should we get into some questions? Yeah, go on, fire away. So this is a good question. It's a response from one of our videos that we've done before, and it's from NPD one one two five. So whoever funny that name. is, it's a funny <laughs> name. But there'll be a reason why there's a number and a few letters and things <laughs> on that. But um, it says question for Leicester. And how long have you been playing with a ten finger grip? This person um, recently used the 10 finger grip, took him a few holes to get into it, but after that felt like they were starting to strike the ball really, really well. So just so those of you who don't know what 10 finger grip, what we're talking about right now, is that you get these different grips that we're obviously holding the club with. So for me, I'm an interlock. I yeah. tend to go interlock. Then you've got overlap, and then you've got reverse overlap and, and things like that, even cross-handed for some people. We'll talk about that in a minute. I think Steve Jones had a double he overlap. Was, yeah, was Steve Jones, he was, a, he was a major winner. Was yeah. it, he win the PGA or US Open? Yeah. One of those. I think it was the PGA. Yeah, I think I'm pretty he won. sure. US it was, yeah. PGA, yeah. Um, but so what Leicester does, and what this, this person is talking about on the question, is that te Leicester uses what we call a 10 finger grip or a baseball grip. Um, and how long have you been using it? Since I, it's basically, since I started golf, um, I've got quite small hands. It just felt, when I was 13, 14, it just felt comfortable to pick the club up in that way. Yeah. Um, obviously with county coaching and my own coaches, everyone tried to change it. I remember, yeah. I remember Every that. time I went for a lesson, lessons, you need yeah. to change your grip, you need to do this. Yeah. But as I was still improving and progressing, I didn't think it was necessarily a priority. And yeah. I thought, I'll keep going, see how low I can get with the grip before that I have to change. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, but I then never did. I got to a stage then where I got to scratch and turn pro and I was like I'm too late to change it and it's a good message though isn't it because you know it doesn't really matter how you hold the club to a point if it feels comfortable to you then stick with it and yours is a pr kind of a prime example I know it's stuff that we that, that some people who do junior a lot of junior coaching they will teach kids how to do 10 finger because they think that they can probably get them to hit it a bit faster yeah maybe get a bit more club head speed but I mean I've not done I've not practiced not tested that to sort of get any evidence whether that's the case but I know that that's maybe that's some a future video yeah but there you Possibly. go another video yeah um but yeah so you've been doing it basically all your oh, life yeah even though people have tried to change Leicester yeah. he's pretty much been doing it 25 years so. yeah Stephen O'Sullivan why the American football on the wall and we're talking about this American football why this American football um to be honest with you I, I just really like it it's um it's a tight list I was invited over to America in 2018 for the, the 2018 Partners Conference with Footjoy and Titleist and all part of uh, Talky Pro Shop with what we've been doing from the shop. We've been obviously... We, at that, I never that went. Time. I never, never went. went, no. There was only room, only room for one on the plane. I never got the memo. <laughs> um, and obviously I spent a lot of time in America. So I was at university in America for four years and used to go to a lot of American football games and I love my rugby back home. So it just kind of, you know... It's that, that shape of ball, isn't it? It's pretty cool. So that goes on the wall. Not, not, not round it's enough for me. Not round enough. No, Leicester likes like his football balls. and round balls. He's not sure about the peanut no. ball, are you? No, it just doesn't, just doesn't bounce straight, does it? No, no it, it doesn't, no. Doesn't no. look right, does it? But anyway, that's why it's on the wall. Just a snazzy little ball. Quite cool, actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I like it. You like it now? Yeah. You're happy with that? I like it, but I don't like the game. No, particularly. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Takes a long time as well. Like. I, I want to... I wanna, 
do something now. I think we need to get outside and do something. I never like your ideas. Yeah, they I've used to get me in trouble when we were younger. Yeah, used to get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, I want to talk about your chipping. Okay, this is a question that's come up, and it's something that, that people have asked about with regards to your cross-handed grip when you chip. Yeah. And I've got a bit of an idea on the way you chip, okay. but I just want to go outside and, and have a little experiment with a few different ideas. Any help is... is um is wanted and needed. Really? And yeah, thank you. You never like my help. <laughs> like, we always end up in an argument when I start helping him, you know? Or, true, or right. trying to help him, you know? Heated discussion rather than argument. Is it heated discussion? <laughs> anyway, should we go outside and do some, um, yeah. have a little look at the short game? Let's go. Let's get out there. <laughs> right, let's talk about your grip. Okay. So, what, number one, why did you even go down the line of changing your grip from a standard 10 fingered normal grip, should we say, okay. to then reversing it? What, what happened? What happened? Um, lots of duff chips, lots of fins, fat, just no confidence whatsoever. And did you go for lessons for this though? Did you try no, and deal no. with it in that way so or did you try and deal with it yourself? Deal with myself. I was a golf professional when it started to first happen. Right. It was, it was, I put it down to the shift from playing on Churston, which at the time was very hard and linksy. Yeah. Tight lies, which I loved yeah. at the time, to coming over to Torquay when I turned pro where it was more um, the ground. Parkland, it's Parkland, it's yeah. clay, so, so it's clay, clay based. based. So we've got a lot of clay here at Torquay. But the green keeper at the time, there was no, there, it was literally fairway into mm -hmm. rough. So if you missed the green, you were in rough, which would have been two, three, four, five inches deep in right. places. There was no tight lies. So it was no, completely, okay. and it just completely ruined my chipping and pitching. Right, okay, so. So then you moved into from conventional grip to then yeah cross-handed and yeah. you did that what I mean what made you did you not try and just change interlocking and overlapping I tried, and stuff? literally tried everything right. I um I was traditionally in in my teens I was my short game was like must yeah it was good I used to putt, putt the world and hold the world and yeah. I could chip and park I'd feel confident getting up and down from everywhere yeah um, but did you putt cross-handed no always putt 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 ten, 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 ten finger, finger again grips, yeah. yeah chip ten finger with ten or well, the baseball grip yeah everything was baseball grip so let me show me a couple of chip okay. shots of what you would yep. do then cross handed because i'm i'm right. quite intrigued because i want to have a go at this because okay. i've never done this basically i've got two techniques that i use when i lose a little bit of confidence in one i'll revert to the second option the first one would be more traditional so just backwards of um just backwards of center yeah hands forward okay um a little bit more clo well close slightly closer to the ball Gives me a slightly more. Um, so you lean angle. the so handle. The handle towards the. Um, so you're leaning the, ball. the handle up this way. Yeah. yeah. So I've only got the sort of the toe in contact with the ground. Yeah. Um, and my hand hands forward. So I'm in that position. Hands forward. Okay. So I'll take that. It's a good shot. Yeah. And the the second one, I had a fitted when I got fitted for Vokey wedges. Yeah. Um, 18 months ago. Um, Will Henry. Yeah. Uh, give me a fitting as well, a, a slight lesson. Right. So he gave me another technique which I found works as well. Okay. Um, which is ball position inside my left left toe. Okay, so you're you'll be setting up more here. So yep. if you look down the camera line there, you're more here whereas before you were more here, you're yes. now kind of more into the, on into the left, left side. Foot. Okay. Yeah. And really sort of using using the bounce of the club. So my hands and the shaft would be sort of parallel to the ball rather than leaning shaft forward okay. or back. So yeah. it would be actually parallel. So what Lester's trying to say there is when he had his fitting is he's talking about the chap that fitted him, Will, who's a, a tour fitter for, for wedges. He was talking to Lester about how he uses his bounce maybe a little bit more. And by having the ball position back in his stance, it made him kind of lean the handle forward, which in turn what that does is it lifts the back edge up so the bounce then is taken off the club. Will got Leicester to push the ball position forward, which in turn leans the shaft maybe just a fraction further back, and then he's able to sort of lift that front edge and then start to use the, the sort of back trailing edge of the club a little bit more. And do you think this has made it more or less diggy? Does the club dig in less, or do you feel now that you're using the back edge a little bit I more? I feel like I'm using the back edge a little bit more. Okay. Um, Go on then, let's hit um, a couple. So we've just done some a little bit of playing in the studio with Leicester and I asked him to play those two different ball positions. And interestingly, you were 
in the back position you were between five and eight degrees angle of attack down. Yeah, which you'd expect. Which is what you would expect, handle hand forward, forward, sort of chopping yeah. down into the ball a little bit more. But then when he pushed the ball position forward, it moved from like two degrees to five degrees. So yeah. there is a slight shift, even though you're kind of, they can, their angle of attack can match up at five degrees. There's one that's going a little bit steeper at eight degrees, and there's another one that's going a little bit shallower at sort of two degrees, which is yeah. kind of what you would expect from the way in which you're positioning that ball and how the club is working. Yeah. Chop that. Lovely. <laughs> that, no, that's perfect. <laughs> that's what we wanted to see, really. No, we didn't. <laughs> I've got a look at the here. wet. Look at the look at the amount of mud you've still got on the club. Hang on a minute. It's a lovely bit of mud <laughs> there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So, what? Just talk. What was that? Do we have position? to? Do we have to talk about that one? Yeah, we do because <laughs> we that's don't. really, really important. Can we like, cut, right, cut, and the cut. reason why I want to talk about this is because when I play with Leicester, he does this like once or twice around, especially when he gets this club out. This club is his 61 degree trusty, rusty Cobra wedge, which in its day was a, you know, it was revolutionary, really, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But. For me, I think that there's just zero bounce on this thing. I mean, you put the club down and it's just flush to the surface, so there's nothing helping Leicester at the back end of this, this I don't wedge. Think there's anything that could help me. Talk to me about that. That ball position was more back, wasn't it? Was that back or forward? That was back, yeah. That was the back that was one. Back, yeah. And that's where he kind of, as I, I said, he takes the, the leading edge or he pushes the handle forward and then takes the back edge away. Yeah? yeah. No, it wasn't good, was it? Wasn't good, no. <laughs> so I've got a little little thing for Leicester now. I've brought out another club, which is a this is 61, but this is 58 that I've got in my hand. And we've got 14 degrees of bounce on this one. So we've got a big solid wedge at the bottom of the club, so a big sole, and then lots and lots of bounce. I just want him to have a little play with this and just see how it goes. Good shot. Yeah, How did that one feel? That was a good shot. It was a lower. It was a lower flight than lower flight. Yeah, absolutely. Lower. So why do you think it would be a lower flight? Well, there's, there's um, three degrees less on the yeah okay on the, on the less, set yeah. loft, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, um, probably probably the the bounce would affect the flight as well. Yeah, yeah, because the club is not digging down as much. It means that Leicester's strike location is a little bit lower in the face, which ultimately, as you go further up the face, you create a little bit more loft. So with this club, which is the 61, and yes, he's right, there's three degrees difference in loft from the get-go, but as he pushes that strike higher up, he gets more of a poppy shot, well, or, or a duff shot. But in that situation, obviously, because it hit it lower in the face, it got it coming out a little bit lower. So he got his loft just a little bit down a bit as he hit the shot. Two good shots in a row there. Oh, this guy stop. No, well, there's I, never three in a row. No, but well, there it could be. Again, really good. Are you feeling a little bit more confident no. with that club? No, not at all. Good, <laughs> right, perfect. So what we're going to do? We're going to have a little challenge. Okay, bit of fun. All right. I'm going to do cross hand because I've never chipped cross hand at all, even though yeah. I putt cross hand. I'm going to chip cross handed. Cool. You're going to chip conventionally so why oh, want you no. to go back to oh, 10 no. finger grip no. okay however i'm going to use your wedge and you're going to use this wedge okay and we're going to have a proper challenge here now right so the winner oh no no sorry the loser yeah. makes the coffees and we'll finish off in the studio but the loser oh. makes the coffees all right yeah. tough little shot now all right we're gonna go from this position here, and I, I've got to stress that this is quite a wet position at the moment. It's quite boggy and wet around this area because it's a bit, it's been a lot of rain recently. We're gonna go from this position, get the excuses in there. over the bunker, really to shake it up a bit. And then we've got to get it tight to that white flag just there. Okay? I might not be going over that bunker. But you can go around it, whatever you want, <laughs> whatever you want. But you've got to, but it. the rules are you must hit the green. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go second, I think. Okay. You happy there? I'm happy there, yeah, that's nice. That's a typical winter lie, I like that. Right. Just to, can you just give me a bit of advice with this cross-handed? Are you feeling like you're flicking the right hand or what's happening here? You're not to giving To be honest, Dan, right? most of the time when I chip, I have my eyes shut. Haven't got a clue. So I, I haven't really got a clue. And I'm preferring the ball position forward oh, yeah. action. Okay. Only because I feel like this, going is, in the bunker, this is like the Straight leading in the edge. How do you use this club? Straight in the bunker. Yes. <laughs> I would take that. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> I would take that. I'd be quite happy with that. I'd be like, there you go, boys, it's on the green. <laughs> Like, do you want to like... Sort? You are not beating that, like... <laughs> which, which hole are we going for? The white flag! Were we? Where's the I ball? thought we were going for the yellow one. No white, didn't I just say white flag? I don't know if you did, did he? Did you just Comments see below? that shot? Did, I, did you get that? <laughs> it wasn't even a golf shot, I'd be upset with that. Oh, that's good. I don't know, I let my parents down, I've let Dan down, I've let you down, Lee, on camera. I'll, uh, I'll get yours. I'll get yours here, yeah? Where's my coffee? I will make you a coffee shortly. We're doing this. We're, we're, Half sugar now. We're YouTubing Half, now. I'm reducing we're, down We're sugar. YouTubing at the moment. We're not pro shop staff at the moment. We're YouTubers. Oh, okay. But we were playing for a coffee out there that we were doing as a YouTube thing. We were playing okay. for a coffee. Well, yeah. Yeah. I'm Are looking you? forward to it. Good. Half a sugar. I'll make it with love. Okay. Wedges then. What did you take from going from, obviously, your one with very low bounce compared yeah, I mean, to the one with bigger bounce? So, I've, again, I've just changed my wedges. So mm -hmm. I've just gone from Vokey now into the, the new Cobra yeah. uh, wedge. Which, which has got more bounce. It's got it's more a bigger bounce. sole. Yeah, a bigger sole. So, I've got 58 degrees with a lot more bounce. So, okay. I've basically got the two options which you're showing here are yeah. very similar to the two options, but I think I will actually probably experiment and practice. I'm going to put some hard graft and a bit of practice in. I will try the, the 58 with a more bounce and maybe even get rid of that one. Well, uh, you see, I think you've got a lot of confidence with this, but I just think you need to be mindful of what time of the year you pull it out to play yeah. with it. Like, I think if yeah. you take it on a Lynx golf course where it's really dry, I think this one will give you a lot of confidence to go up and over things. And, you know, when you've got a bare lie and things like that, I think that might give you a little bit more confidence. But... Just be mindful that you don't necessarily have to use that all year round. You no. could reduce that, put in a you know something else I, at the top. I end took a wedge one. out of my bag to give me more room at the top yeah, end of which, my bag. Which so. I kind of like that. But again, if you guys that down there are struggling with your um, chipping and pitching, catching it heavy, catching it thin, you know, obviously first protocol is go and see a PGA pro which and get is a what lesson. I will do, which, which is what we're going to yeah. do, aren't we? So. But definitely have a little look at your wedges just check out what the sole of the club is looking like what the bounce is looking like you know just by changing the wedge it might just give you a little bit more confidence moving forward i definitely think that's something you need to do a little yeah bit. so put your comments down below what do you think about this little little test that we've done here you can see there with lester obviously he's lost a bit of confidence over the years you know a lot of scars in what he's done over the years with his golf um, which has obviously affected his short game, which has made it why he's made an extreme change of a grip change. And there's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, if that works, then then use it. You know, Matt Fitzpatrick uses a little bit yeah. of cross hand chipping action occasionally, doesn't he? He does, yeah. Um, so if it works for you, I would like to hear as well your comments. Put them down below. Do you use a slightly different action when you're chipping compared to what you get in, let's say, in your full game? Is your grip slightly different? Do you interlock? Do you overlap? Do you do anything different from your chipping point of view? And how do nerves affect your game, certainly in the short game? We haven't even talked about my putting yet, have we? <laughs> That'll be on another Sunday show. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like what he's doing. And uh, we look forward to catching up with you again soon. See you next Sunday. See you next Sunday.